T. Higgins, their young wide receiver, really good, but he's hurt with an injury. Also, uh, one of their key defensive players, Trey Wayne's a cornerback. He's all banged up. He's out of this game. So you look at it from the injury standpoint, and of course, it looks like it evens out. But my question to you, knowing that you're going to try to get after a guy in Joe Burrow, whom if he has time can light it up from the pocket, are you that concerned with the list of names that are missing and them still trying to get after Burrow and making life tough for him? Well, I think part of the part of the thing is, you know, Alu Alu not being in there. I mean, that's going to be a big, a more interesting loss, I think, as the season goes on than people think. And you know, I think the big thing with uh, the Bengals are they they still their interior line is not great, and I think they're going to you know have issues protecting Burrow all year long. So, to me, I mean, if 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 Ingram can play, if um, which he can, obviously, if if Watt can play. And, you know, as long as Cam Hayward is playing, mm. they're going to be able to put pressure on the quarterback, especially Burrow. They'll, they'll be able to get after him. They'll be able to force him into mistakes. It'll be the kind of thing where they'll hit him a lot. I mean, I expect Josh, and I could be wrong, and if I am, I'm sure, you know, I'll hear from people uh, emailing me and tweeting me whether I was wrong. But I feel like this is going to be a lower-scoring game. I think this is going to be one of those games that, you know, both offenses struggle a little bit with the other team's defensive front. And... You know, whatever quarterback makes a few plays is probably going to win the game. Let's keep the topic talking about the defensive fronts, and particularly with the Steelers. This running game, it was ranked 32 in the league last season. It's 31st now. Najee Harris, 23 carries, 86 yards. We have not seen a lot from him. He ran the ball all of, what, 10 times in this, this previous game? It, it just seems like, Paul, we're looking at a situation where if the Steelers get behind in a game, it's going to be harder for them to win it. It feels like to me that the best position they can be in is either in a tie game or if they're ahead, because if they can try to get an opportunity to run the football, they might be able to get something going, but if they become one dimensional, it just seems harder and harder for this team to win games. Well, you know, I think the big thing with the running game is that I don't know that they've really given it a good chance. I mean, they, they basically abandoned it before the, the first half of the first game. Mm. You know, in, in the second quarter of the game against the Bills, they were already, you know, turned it into Ben's, you know, RPO, Chuck and Duck offense. And, you know, I think that the, the, the problem is you've got a quarterback, that's the way he wants to play. Um, but if they're going to get better at running the football, they've got to understand that you do that by, by actually going out calling running plays and sticking with it. And, you know, you've got to have a little bit of patience and you want your guys to get better, to get their timing down, to all those kinds of things. They've got to stick with it a little bit. I'm not saying they've got to become 1970s Steelers, three yards in a cloud of dust Steelers. Hmm. But, I, you know, you, if you're going to continue to just allow Ben to, you know, do the RPO thing and, and, and basically chuck and duck, you're never going to be a good running team because you're not going to really work on the things you need to work on in order to become a good running team. I think it's a good way to look at it. And there's another thing that you can mention here as far as just the offense as a whole that Matt Cannon has put together. You saw them commit to it in the first half of the game against the Raiders and things are working pretty well. And then all of a sudden they just went away from it. And we never saw much of a semblance of progress ever again. It's kind of an interesting dynamic to point out when we're trying to figure out just what this offense's identity is. We got to take a break. We come back. Want to talk some college football. Pitt's homecoming. Got a game coming up against New Hampshire. Of course, coming off that loss against Western Michigan. We'll talk about that and more. Plus, we're taking your phone calls. 412-575-2600 on the Borders and Borders hotline. Maybe take a couple tweets at Josh Taylor HD. See you back here in a minute.